friends, I am Jules. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about the ways of chocolate tempers. Hi, I'm Jules from Bonnie Bakery and today I'm going to show you how to temper chocolate either with or without a thermometer. This is something which is a really important step in a lot of desserts and different chocolates that you're making, but people think it's really difficult to do and it's actually not. Uh, so I'm going to show you both methods, first the traditional method with a thermometer and then I'm going to show you a really easy way to do it just in the microwave. So the first thing you want to do is get your chocolate chopped up really nice and small. Um, you want to make sure that you're using proper chocolate for this, not like chocolate chips or candy melts or anything like that. Um, it's usually just you can get decent chocolate in bars like this in the supermarket. Uh, if you're using dark, make sure it's at least 70% cocoa. Um, but you can also do this with milk or white chocolate as well. Uh, chop it up into small pieces and we're going to, for the first method, get a metal bowl. And I'm going to put about two thirds of the chocolate in here and keep about a third of it in the glass bowl. And then we're going to heat this over a saucepan. So I just have a regular saucepan here with a little bit of water in it, like this much water. Um, and we're just going to heat this up and what we're going to do is put the metal bowl over the water to heat the chocolate more gently. It's just easier to control this way and you want to make sure that the water doesn't come high enough to touch the bottom of the bowl because then it's going to be really difficult to control the heat. Um, so this is the method using a thermometer. There are two kinds of candy thermometers that you'll usually see. There's one like this which kind of clips onto the side of your bowl. And there's ones like these which are just probes which you'll insert in. Um, I have used all different kinds, they all work, they all do the same job. This one though, I love, um, I got this in a set with a spatula so you can actually mix the chocolate as you go and check the temperature with the spatula which is amazing. Um, I'm going to put a link to this as well down below so that you can get one because they're awesome and it's my favourite tool. So the water is just starting to simmer now. I'm going to take the chocolate in the metal bowl and just put it over here and just let it start to melt gently and start stirring it around. And I'm going to turn on my candy thermometer here. So the idea with chocolate tempering is that you want to heat it to a point where the bad crystals in the chocolate get destroyed but the good crystals still remain intact and what that does is it gives it that lovely snap when you break the chocolate and it gives it the gorgeous glossy shiny finish as well. Um, so this is just starting to melt gently now. What we're going to do is we're going to heat this to um, no more than 113 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put all of the temperatures in a blog post linked below because it's different temperatures for dark milk and white chocolate. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to immediately start pouring in our reserved chocolate and that's going to bring down the temperature. We want to get this back down to about 27 degrees Celsius or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hard to remember both. <laughs> um, and this is going to, you're going to add a little bit at a time and watch it melt. So this chocolate will melt in and the whole time you want to be stirring this. Again, you want to move it as much as possible because that encourages the, the good crystals um, and the good crystals in the new chocolate as well will be encouraged to stick around and do their thing. So keep adding it until it's all melted and this should bring down the temperature of the chocolate pretty rapidly. We want to bring this back up to 31 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Fahrenheit so that we can work with it really well. What I'm going to do is put it back on top of the saucepan. Um, I probably won't need to turn the heat back on because it's still going to be pretty hot and there's a lot of steam coming out and we're only trying to heat it a very small amount. Okay, that's it. Alright, our chocolate is tempered now. Um, you always want to test it before you use it just to make sure that it's properly tempered. And the way to do that is just to grab a piece of parchment paper, take some of your chocolate and just dribble it over there and then leave it for a few minutes. With dark chocolate, it should set fairly quickly, definitely within five minutes. Um, so you should be able to touch it, it'll be completely set at room temperature without putting it in the fridge. And that's how you know it's properly tempered. So we're just gonna leave this for a few minutes and see what it does. All right, so it's only been about two minutes and you can already see that these thinner parts are already set. The big one in the middle is still working on it because it's a bit thicker. 
um, but that is a very good sign that this is properly tempered. Alright, so as you can see, this is totally set now, which means this is tempered and ready to use. You want to use this while it's still within the 31 degree temperature range-ish. Um, if it starts to get too cold, then you can just heat it up very, very gently. I wouldn't put it back over a high heat, but just maybe blast it for a few seconds on top of the saucepan. Just you don't want to destroy all the hard tempering work we did. If you do reheat it, make sure that you check the tempering again before you use it because you don't want to use it up in your molds and then realize that it's not tempered properly. So that is the traditional way to temper chocolate. Now I'm going to show you a much easier way where you don't need any fancy equipment or candy thermometers. If you don't want to chop chocolate by yourself, get yourself a handy helper. Okay, so same thing again, same chocolate chopped up. Um, I'm going to put it this time in a plastic bowl, um, obviously not metal because it's going in the microwave. And you also don't want to do it in a glass bowl because the glass actually retains the heat really, really well um, and it makes it harder to control the temperature. So again, I'm going to pour about two thirds of it in. And then we're going to melt this in the microwave at 30 second increments. We don't want it to be completely melted. We want it till it's maybe three quarters of the way melted. And I'll show you what I mean when I'm done that. So I'm gonna put this in 30 seconds at a time uh, until it's where I want it. This is exactly where we want it now. So the chocolate is almost all melted, but there's a few chunks in there. What we're gonna do is just keep stirring this vigorously until it's completely melted. And then I'm gonna add in the unmelted chocolate here. All right, so this is completely melted there now. There's no lumps left. And I'm just gonna pour in a little bit of this. We're it's not very good. <laughs> what do you call this, Christopher? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if at any point when you're adding more chocolate, it looks like it's not going to melt, just stop adding it. Don't add any more um, because you'd have to reheat it in order to melt that. If you're left with any chunks in the end which haven't melted properly, um, if they're like a big chunk, just take them out and use what you've got because that will all be properly tempered. And if you try and heat it again to melt those last few chunks, you're gonna have to start all over again. Nice. Hold up, that is brilliant. You just stay right still. Stay still. Let me help you. <laughs> oh wow, that's in your hair too. <laughs> Shit. Wow, you got a nice quite a while to melt the chunks so I'm probably not going to add any more chocolate after this. I'll just let these last little lumps uh, melt and then it should be ready to go. Alright so I've just grabbed the same parchment paper that I tested the other method on earlier and I'm going to do the same thing over again. Alright so it's been like maybe a minute and a half and that's already starting to set. So successfully tempered both with the traditional method and with the microwave method. You do not need a candy thermometer to temper chocolate, so you have no excuse to have beautifully shiny, snappy chocolates. I'm going to use this now to make some Valentine's hot chocolate bombs, so if you want to make some of those yourself, then be sure to check that video out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, tempering chocolate is a little bit easier than you thought. If you give it a try and you give the microwave method a try, I'd love to hear how it turned out, so let me know in the comments below. I'll be posting a new video next week with some extra special Valentine's treats, so make sure that you subscribe so you can see that video too. Happy baking!